Hi there, it's day 28 of the Sunny Balwani trial. I'm going to give you the highlights of today's testimony and an update on Elizabeth Holmes' acquittal motion. And I'm going to give you analysis of whether I think today's testimony was helpful or it backfired on Balwani. So please do subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the bell notification button so you're notified of my next video. And if you want to support this channel, support and contribute to helping me make these videos, it's a lot of work. I put a link to PayPal in the description box below the video. And again, these videos for education information, simply my analysis. I want to know what's your analysis on this testimony. What do you think? So let me go ahead and give you the highlights. Oh, by the way, I'm Michelle Hagen. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor. You may recognize me because I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case. Sonny Balwani is a co-defendant and the alleged co-conspirator of Elizabeth Holmes. He's facing the same 12 counts of wire fraud that Elizabeth Holmes faced. I think the text testimony probably is concluding today or tomorrow. The jury will be instructed and then it will be in the hands of the jury to deliberate and decide what Sonny Balwani's outcome will be. So, or I should say, what the verdict will be. Okay, so let me give you the highlights of today's testimony. So the judge, um, actually, before I get into Balwani, Elizabeth Holmes, acquittal motion. The judge has scheduled a hearing, giving both sides opportunity to argue, present their points, and for the judge to make a decision on whether or not he's going to grant Elizabeth Holmes an acquittal. In other words, throw out her convictions. That hearing will take place at 9 o'clock on July 21st. It's currently scheduled for July 21st. So I'll keep you posted on that. All right, so let's get to the Balwani. And I think it's, I think it's day 28 or 29 of the Sunny Balwani trial. So um, the judge excused one of the jurors, I think I mentioned this in the last video, for health reasons. So juror number five was excused. So that means one of the alternate is now put in with the panel of 12, and that leaves two alternates. All right, so what else happened? There was a discussion regarding documents and whether or not they were going to be putting a paralegal on the stand, a paralegal from the defense's firm to testify to the do bunch of documents that they want to enter in. The judge, um, I think, is going to be reviewing those documents to determine whether or not they're going to be admitted, and we'll see what happens and what the context of those documents are because the prosecution may want to call the paralegal. Now, they did this in the Holmes case. They did have the paralegal get on the stand and explain a lot of the summary of the documents some charts that were made. I think it was relating to patient results, but I'll keep you posted on that. Um, so the judge is going to make a decision whether or not those documents are going to come in. I guess the government's going to decide maybe in their rebuttal case whether or not they're going to call the paralegal. I don't know if it's helpful or not. We'll find out or if it's necessary or not. So here's the, here's the analysis. Um, that I want to get to is they put to the defense put on this is we're in the defense's case now the defense put on an expert witness to talk about encryption of database recovering databases and that gets to that sticky little missing database that the defense keeps bringing up you know because their point is they're trying to argue and they've argued this before with the judge and the judge actually decided, I have to look at my notes here, back in February um, as to what happened to this database. And it's a Theranos, I think it's called the Theranos uh, Laboratory Information System, the LIS database. What happened with it was that it was dismantled. Um, it was, The prosecution was provided a copy, but they weren't given an encryption key. Meanwhile, uh, Theranos had uh, dismantled the whole database, but didn't tell the government they were doing that. So two years later, or during that time, the government was trying to get access to the data. What was in there, the defense wanted it to be brought in, wanted to talk about the missing database, 
because in that database, the defense has argued several times, repeatedly, um, there was the patient results, and that could tell whether or not the technology was accurate or not. In other words, that evidence could be exculpatory towards Balwani, and they tried to point the finger at the government. Well, the judge ruled back in February, basically the government was, at a, was not at fault regarding not getting into the database earlier, finding out that they needed an encryption, et cetera, because the government said, the judge said the government wasn't aware of Theranos' plan to decommission its servers. So how was the government supposed to know? And also the judge pointed out that the government had issued subpoenas back in 2018 ordering Theranos to preserve its data, including the LIS, the LIS database. But Theranos went ahead and dismantled it. Um, Theranos decommissioned the original database without notifying the prosecutors and only giving them a copy of an encrypted hard drive without the description without I can't talk today without the decryption key. So they didn't have the encryption the the key to unlock the database to unlock the copy that they were given to unlock the encrypted hard drive that they were given. They weren't given the encryption key. Judge also added that the emails between Theranos' attorneys um, at the time, they knew that the prosecutors didn't have the encryption key. And the judge said, quote, all of that paints a picture of deception or at least not giving full information to both part to the parties, to the government. In other words, not telling the government that it was encrypted. Yet the defense of Balwani's case wants to point the finger and blame, I think that's what they're doing here, again, this is just my opinion, wants to blame the government for not opening up that database, opening up that hard drive, finding out earlier that I guess it needed to be decrypted, so that that information could have been used in Balwani's favor. But the government has argued repeatedly that that's, that is speculative as to whether whatever information was on that database would be helpful or not towards Balwani, that's speculative. So anyway, the, go the, gov the judge ruled that the government basically wasn't at fault and basically, I think, pointed the finger at what, it, what Theranos was doing when they were under subpoena to turn over the database, they ended up decommissioning it. And I'll get to the point about what happened today, so let me get there. Let me tell you about the highlights of that testimony. So um, the defense, Balwani's counsel, called an expert witness to testify about the missing database. And here's what happened. So the expert witness is Richard Sonier. He's an expert witness to testify on the missing database and to recovering encrypted databases. So basically the defense called him to say whether or not, whether or not you could recover that information, whether or not you could get access to an encrypted database. Okay, I think the defense was trying to say the government didn't do their job. I think, I think is what the defense is trying to say, to put a little shade towards the government. So the expert witness took the stand and talked about his experience recovering encrypting databases. And then um, he said he was getting paid about $300 an hour to testify. And the judge allowed him to testify as an expert relating to data encryption and data recovery. Uh, he said, the witness said in August 2018, before Theranos decommissioned, disassembled its servers, Theranos gave the prosecutors USB drives with copies of the LIS database, but the drives were encrypted and two years later, the prosecutors realized that the data on the drives was also encrypted and they didn't have the encryption key. So this, in other words, this witness testified that there was no way, basically no way to access or unlock the Theranos database. Now, I don't know if that was helpful to the defense 
I don't know. But then the defense did ask this witness, their witness, if he faults the government for not being able to encrypt, decrypt the USB drives, he said no. This sort of thing happens periodically in the industry. So in other words, their own witness wasn't pointing the finger at the government. At least that's how I read the testimony. All right, so what else happened? There was multiple objections made by the prosecutor regarding additional questions that the defense attorneys wanted to ask this witness. Then cross-examination. So the prosecutor asked this expert witness if he thinks in his opinion it was helpful his opinion was helpful to the defense's case. He just said, this expert just said, he wasn't pointing the finger at the government here. He said it was common in the industry, right? So um, he responded, I, it's, I'm not actually sure if it's helpful or not. From the filings, I would assume that they are making arguments because it's helpful, he says. Then, the prosecutor pointed out that the government subpoenaed Theranos in 2018, and the subpoena said any person who holds, alters, deletes, or destroys documents, including electronic documents, could be subject to criminal prosecution. Then they asked, they tried to, the prosecutor was trying to pick apart this expert witness's testimony that the government could have tried to put it back together, could have tried to put back together the Theranos disassembled servers to recover the database. But this expert admitted he doesn't know where the hardware is stored and he doesn't have firsthand experience with it. So in other words, this expert couldn't testify one way or another whether or not they could reassemble the server because he wasn't, he didn't have it, he never looked at it. So I don't know how helpful that was to the defense. Then the prosecutor got into a bunch of email exchanges between Theranos' attorneys and the government. And in 2018, those emails talked about whether or not the database was provided to the prosecutors. And there was an email in particular that the government introduced with Theranos' CEO, David Taylor, that was sent in August 2018 to the, will, um, to the Theranos attorneys asking them to hash out what they need from the LIS to give to the DOJ. Quote, given the system will be put in storage this Friday and may thereafter be very difficult to resuscitate. So here's an email from the Theranos CEO, David Taylor, telling the Theranos attorneys that they were going to be putting the system into storage and it would be difficult to resuscitate. So they knew that back in 2018, according to this email, it looks like, but did they tell the government that? Then there was another email that the government introduced from a Theranos assignee who wrote, who wrote to prosecutors back in 2019, March of 2019, that guess who? Sonny Balwani and another employee encrypted the now permanently locked Theranos database. So I don't know how helpful that is because here's an email that came in through this expert witness to say that Sonny Balwani and another individual encrypted the now locked Theranos database. So, you know, along with, I mean, I understand what the defense was trying to get to. The defense was trying to say, look, the database was there. It was accessible to the government. They didn't look into it. And therefore, we don't have that information, which is the most important evidence that would show whether or not the technology was accurate. You know, in other words, whether or not Sunny Balwani knew whether or not these technology was accurate and these patient results were accurate. 
but we don't have the database. We didn't have it in the Holmes case. We don't have it in the Balwani's case that would show what the patient results were. That would probably be the most important evidence, according to the defense, to show that Balwani was, you know, Balwani's not guilty of any of these charges. That in fact, that database would prove that the technology was accurate and these results were accurate. That's what I think the defense is trying to argue. Problem is no database and they just put an expert witness on who basically is not faulting the government, just like the judge didn't, and is also saying, you know, that he didn't have access um, to the server to know whether or not you could reassemble it. So I don't know how helpful that is. And then he also, this email pointing the finger and saying, Sonny Balwani is the one who encrypted it. So here's their own client who's saying, this database is important, yet he's the one that encrypted it. And the government was given a copy of the hard drive that was encrypted. I mean, are you following me? I don't know how well this is gonna play out to a jury. So that's my analysis. What do you think? What do you think about this? Do you think the database is gonna be helpful towards Sonny Balwani or not? Do you think the jury is just gonna say, hey, we don't have it, we're not gonna consider it? Do you think maybe it's gonna point the finger at Balwani or say, or say no, we don't have that evidence. So we can't hold Balwani responsible for that. We'll see what happens here. So going forward i don't think the, there's going to be any more witnesses for the defense i think they're probably going to rest their case question is whether or not the prosecution is going to have any rebuttal and again rebuttal testimony should only relate to uh the witnesses that the defense put on the stand so are they going to put somebody on who's going to rebut the expert that just talked about this database or are they going to be calling that paralegal to maybe talk to cross-examine regarding documents, whether or not they come in or not. So we'll find out. So uh, trials to, uh, continues tomorrow. Um, so it may be given to the jury tomorrow and the jury will be instructed on what the law is, told about what the role is as jurors, given the verdict forms, and then they'll go off and deliberate. And we'll probably get a verdict probably next week would be my guess, if not sooner. I would say next week, right? So that's my analysis. What's your analysis? Please do leave a comment. Please support my work by subscribing. And again, if you want to contribute, I'll put a PayPal link in the description box below the video. Hit the bell notification, hit that like button, and thanks for watching.